If you're someone who's thinking of strategies and ways to move forward in your career or to obtain opportunities, you're playing a game and there is a game to your line of work. Some people move forward in their careers much faster and much more significant than others. And I can tell you this, it's not by working hard alone. Hey guys, it's Cindy Kopentoa. I work in the animation industry. And today, I kind of just want to talk about these deep conversations I've been having with my friends and coworkers, uh, coworkers in the industry or something similar to it, about what we do with our craft, our work, and our feelings towards our own industry, or where we see ourselves in this industry or this career. Some of my viewers are prospective students or people just trying to break into the industry. If you're someone training or trying to break into this industry, I'm pretty sure you guys have some ideal studios in mind. Maybe it's Disney, maybe it's Netflix. And this doesn't have to be just animation. It's also video games. It's also concept art. It's also live action. You kind of already have a sort of ideal studio in mind. And when you think about it, it's kind of like choosing a team because I remember when I was at school, there were people who wanted to work for Disney or DreamWorks or Pixar. Netflix animation wasn't really a thing yet. Then there was Nickelodeon, there was Cartoon Network, and there were only a few that wanted to get into video games. So even before I decided to pursue animation, I was thinking about live action film, CG modeling, game design, or, or constant art. And I've always felt like I was sacrificing one or the other and that I had a fear of missing out if I made the wrong choice. And I remember being at CalArts, some students would get internships from either Disney or Pixar. And you know, some people would get really good ones at Cartoon Network. And so it would later add on to their identity, their philosophies, and their overall experience and how they approach work. So I remember when I was a student, it did feel like some of these people did find a place for their true calling, as you know, some would say it. But someone like me who never did an internship, I got rejected most of the time. A part of me felt like I was falling behind and I was having this fear of missing out on something. And now fast forward, I'm now a professional and have been working as a professional for quite some time now. My coworkers and friends would often change studios, would often, I guess, change teams. And I've always wondered what other people were up to, what other studios were up to, who were involved in these projects or studios, certain names, certain people, a name that I could recognize, for example. Would I be making the right choice staying in the current studio that I'm in right now? Or would I be better off finding another place to work in to maybe find those opportunities the fear of missing out. So I would talk to coworkers that I look up to, people who are older than me or people on the same boat as I am. I talked about my feelings about how I felt about the career, where my placement was, or how I felt being in it. You know, there were many times where I felt like I wanted to become a director, a lead, or being a big part of something. But then at the same time, there's a part of me that just, you know, wants to leave the industry, maybe pursue my own personal projects, or maybe just take a break from it. But then at the same time, these feelings of FOMO, or maybe feeling irrelevant if I left. I sometimes wondered what would it be like to maybe, you know, run a production or run a studio or run a show. Or you know what, maybe I'm just an extra hand in a studio or the industry. I don't need to play a big part and I can just make the income that is necessary to my needs. So when I communicate to my friends about these thoughts or when I talk to industry professionals that I look up to, they did speak of playing a certain game in this industry and how much you wanna play or how much you wanna push yourself to move forward in this industry. Whatever tools are available, you're going to use it to move forward. There is a game in this industry, and it's not just animation. It's also in you know video games. It's also in any other entertainment industry. So if you wanted to move forward, you use certain tactics, like maybe you use your connections, or maybe you use a certain event. Maybe a certain project that you're involved with could be a stepping stone to your career. Or maybe you're utilizing the game to sort of avoid this feeling of FOMO, this fear of missing out, as I've mentioned several times. It's the fear of missing out on particular opportunities that could be really good for your career, for example. Playing the game from what I understand from you know my older peers or professionals that I look up to who mentioned it, and the way I would define it is using certain tactics, strategies, or tools that you have to help you move forward in your career, whatever that is. It's an asset or perk that you have. There are many signs where you can unknowingly be playing this game. And the first one I can think of is you're constantly being a salesman. This whole part is kind of general and can apply to many things. But the first one I can think of is let's say you're in an interview and you have to basically sell yourself. Like why you're the one 
that is right for the job or right for the role, why you deserve it, what skills you can offer that many people can't, what makes you so special. This can apply to things like pitching an idea, pitching a project, pitching a show, or pitching a feature film for animation, for example. You're using salesmanship skills to get people you know, excited for this project. And it is a totally new skill. Not every artist is a good salesman. If you're the type who wants to be given these opportunities, you have to be able to have the skill of convincing people. And that's why some artists who are great salesmen have actually moved forward with their career. They've played this game. And if you're in the animation industry, you're constantly hearing people, you know, pitching shows or having an agent and working together with other people, pitching projects, being a salesman, basically playing the game. The other factor that I can bring up that's kind of related to this is being a standout. So let's say we're looking at you as an individual. Maybe you're a person with a unique background, whether it's culturally, where you were raised, how you came about. Maybe it's the color of your skin. Maybe it's your sexual orientation or your gender. I feel like overall identity does play a role with today's world, especially with things starting to lean towards more creator-driven ways. In social media, for example, I'm noticing more artists utilize their pronouns, their gender, their sexual orientation, and their origins, where they come from, and maybe a little description of what they stand for. The individual could be prideful about their own identity and would love to share it to the world, or maybe it's a trend thing where they're all doing it together, and it seems fun and empowering. Or maybe it's a tactic, maybe they're using it to sort of like elevate themselves so people recognize that they do come from a unique background, so it might give them some career opportunities. Opportunities. And that is something that I can't confirm. But one thing I can confirm is that, you know, when I do pitch shows or when I hear, you know, stories about people pitching projects, one of the things that people point out is that they're looking for people with unique backgrounds. Maybe they represent a culture, maybe it's their sexual orientation to make projects that represent those communities. So if you're someone that keeps bringing up your unique background and you're using it to be given opportunities or to make a statement for the community, then you are playing some sort of game. Okay, while well, editing, I didn't really think about this until now. And another factor that I'd like to talk about is popularity. There are names that you'll easily recognize because they have some form of fame behind it. Maybe this individual has a huge clout or huge social media following. They're kind of like a mini celebrity in this community. Clout and social media, these are things that people do hold value of. Recruiters do notice it. People in development notice it. Talents and artist management also recognize it. But that's not to say that you need a huge following or huge social media cloud to be able to work in this industry. But can it be used as an advantage to move forward in your career? Absolutely. And I can see that happen in so many ways. Let's say you're trying to sell a show idea, right? And let's say it's a show idea that's based on a webcomic that you made. Then if you're a salesman, you could talk about how many views it got, how many people are reading it, the reviews it got, is it well received? If you're someone that's well known in the community, if you're someone that's a veteran, then you have more of a chance of getting this opportunity. Maybe you also have someone else that's famous that's on board too, someone that's popular or famous. Maybe it's a movie actor that's going to voice the main character. I do think that fame and popularity can be used as a tool to sort of move forward in this game. Then there's a feeling of FOMO for a certain project or production. Missing out on cool projects or opportunities, maybe once in a lifetime projects. Missing out on opportunities that can, you know, lead to some really cool things. A significance in history, maybe a step up in your career. Maybe you're in your current project right now thinking what it would be like to be on this other project that people have been talking about in rumors, in secrecy. Like what's up with that? Knowing if the project that you're in right now is right or if it's just a fluke. Do you have doubts about your project or are you confident in it? Do you feel like you'd be better off in a different production? So let's say in animation for example, would you rather be in feature animation or television animation? Who are people involved in some of these projects and you know, maybe some of them are recognizable, maybe you might get starstruck. And so maybe you're trying to cater yourself so you kind of fit into those projects down the line later on. You produce new portfolios or produce new work that caters to those projects that you want to get involved with. You're sort of playing the game. Then there's that feeling of competition between productions, between peers, or between studios. Sometimes you'll see a studio outsell or outperform another studio's piece of work. Maybe a studio has done some innovative things recently, and now it's gotten people turning heads. Productions will try and secure a really talented artist for their productions. And I remember every time I'm in a studio, there's always some form of 
slight competition between different productions, even though it's in the same studio. So you'll hear some slight competition between productions that are on the same team. And of course, there's competition with other people, other co-workers, maybe artists, whether it's in a studio or whether it's in a different studio. Basically, you're competing with an external factor. And if you see yourself competing, or you feel like you're competing with someone or you need to compete with someone or you need to outsmart them or one-up them, then you're playing the game. Another factor that I'd like to talk about are peers and social groups, who your friends are, who you surround yourself with, being friends with, I guess, the right people or whatever you feel are the right people. Maybe you're the type of person who wants to surround yourself with people that might help you move forward in your career. Maybe you're the type of person who likes to name drop that you're slightly bragging that you either know this person or you're working with this person. Remember when I said that anyone can use any tactic to move forward in their career even when it comes to people? Sucking up is also a tactic apparently. If you find yourself trying to select people that you want to associate yourself with for your own ulterior motives, you're playing the game. And then there's a bunch of strategies and factors that one could use to move forward in their career. Maybe it's timing, being at the right moment at the right place. Maybe it's innovation, maybe that new discovery of making a process much more easier or faster, or contributing to the medium in general. These things are of course recognized. Maybe you're the only one volunteering to do the work that no one else wants to do, making an influence, making an impact. Sometimes it could just be in good faith and goodwill, but at other times it could also be used as a strategy to sort of find new opportunities or to be given new opportunities. And of course the list goes on, so if you're doing anything that you think might help you move forward in your career or you'll be given opportunities by doing a certain thing, you're playing a game. And the last factor that I'd like to bring up is your overall vanity to external factors or to other people. So this is basically a combination of everything that I've mentioned, from career, from productions, to competition, to peers and social groups. All of this combined can kind of paint a picture of what your status looks like to other people. And with all of these combined, do these things make you personally fulfilled or is it just to present yourself to an audience or to your peers about who you are based on these other factors that I talked about? Now, after bringing this up, I have one more thing to ask. Is this for yourself? Is this for the love of the craft or for your art or whatever it is? Or is it just a uh, vanity and how people see you as? And whether that dictates what opportunities you get down the line. And the reason I'm bringing this up right now is because I felt this many times in my life from school to college to being a trainee and eventually being a full-time professional. It is a feeling where I always thought if I went to the right school or secured a job in the industry, the feeling would go away, but it didn't. And there were certain feelings that would come back time to time. And that was because I felt like I was constantly playing this game. Now, I'm sure some of my audience who are students or who are people who are not employed will see this and say that I'm at least lucky to have the career that I have, that I'm a professional and I work with some really talented people and that I don't understand what it's like to be in their shoes because I'm not in their shoes and that I am privileged. Who's this dumb idiot trying to lecture about playing this game about this industry or this career or this work down the line? This guy has quite a decent following and works full time in the industry. He doesn't understand. He doesn't understand what it's like. But guess what? I have been in those shoes in the past. I know that feeling exactly. And if you're someone that's really ambitious, like I would say that I'm quite ambitious, no matter how much you obtain, and if you haven't really sat down to figure those things out on why those thoughts are coming back, then it's always going to come back no matter how much you already have. When I was just learning how to draw and animate, I just really wanted to work in a studio. And now that I work in a studio, I just wanna keep moving up. And I realized that it just gets really tiring of constantly just having to think about how do I keep moving up or how do I obtain something that I think that I want or I think that I need. The only thing that you can do or the only thing that I could do is to catch these thoughts why I'm feeling a certain way, what are some things that are making me feel this way, or why it's making me lead to doing some certain habits that make it feel like I'm playing a game. Okay, so maybe we've established that I'm in a different place than many of you guys, and you know, that's a fact for sure. But the other fact is also that there is a sense of feeling that we don't have enough of what we currently have. And another thing that I've been doing more is just to be more aware of how I feel about certain things or catching those emotions or thoughts. 
And if you feel like you're playing some sort of game, whether it's school or whether it's in your career or in this industry or whatever it is, first of all, good job for recognizing it and not trying to dismiss it. And honestly, if these feelings are negative and they make you feel ugly or terrible, there's no shame in that. We're all human. But now I believe the next step is to prioritize what's important to you right now. I would think about your current circumstance, what your life looks like right now, and what's important to deal with right now. Don't worry about comparing yourself to other people at this point. Second is just think about your circumstance and thinking about what you have power over. External factors like given opportunities, getting hired from some place, knowing certain people, these factors are not guaranteed at all. Maybe you have personal goals, whether it's finishing a project, maybe it's a fitness goal, maybe it's studying, learning a new hobby, Factors that you know that if you spent some discipline and time on, it'll get there. What if your priorities or goals are based on your own expectations instead of someone else's expectations of you? Think about things that seem fun or exciting or passionate for you. And this is something that you need to practice frequently. Take the time to not be busy, to not work, and just think about these things, these priorities. And as you practice thinking about your priorities that are based on your own circumstances, things they have power over, things that are important to you right now, then you'll realize that there's a lot of things where you don't feel as much FOMO as you used to before. That fear of missing out becomes less. And now whenever there's a new trend in the art community, whether it's learning a new program, whether it's getting into a production, whether it's getting into <laughs> crypto art, when you realize that it doesn't really fit to what's important to your life right now or to your goals, then it does get easier to dismiss it. So is playing a certain game, whether it's your career, whether it's in an industry or your line of work, is it a bad thing? Personally, I don't think so. Is trying to move up in your career or move forward in your career a bad thing? Totally not. Being involved with many events, many projects, many productions, many teams, many people. These build experiences and these experiences actually mold who you are as a character or a human being. And having these experiences can sort of like give you a better way in how you can prioritize things. When I was a student, I guess I only valued if I got a job in a good studio. Now that I have been in a good studio, I also realize that there's a lot of things that speak louder to me that feels more important to me right now. I realize I work better in a more smaller or independent studio setting. Maybe just not a studio, maybe just doing my own thing. Whereas someone else might want to keep going further and deeper into this game. And you know what? Some people know they are playing a certain game and they'll use whatever tools or advantage they have to move forward. Whether it's knowing the right people, whether it's the skills they have, whether it's the money they have. They're going to use whatever they have in their disposal to move forward. And if they know how things work in this game, then they know the best strategy for it. So personally, I don't see anything wrong with it unless it starts to be bad for your mental, emotional, and physical health. It actually becomes deteriorating to your overall productivity. It causes you art block. And if trying to play this game, trying to move forward in this game is just causing you so much trouble, then maybe it's time to press the pause button on that game. Again, think about your circumstances, what things you have power or control over. And if you were the only one that you were just trying to please or trying to satisfy, what would you do? We're all playing a game in this line of work, whether we know it or not. How important is this game to you? How do you want to play it? Are you going to go all in? Or are you going to give it a few more weights? Or would you know when to stop playing? Anyways, that's pretty much it. Thanks for hearing me out. Bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.